The C-SPAN networks bring you long-form public affairs programming from the nation's capital and are a public service of your television provider. C-SPAN, created by cable. Then in that case, would you please raise your right hand and I'll swear you in. Stand and raise your right hand. Do you swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. The record show the witness answered, yes, uh, you are now under oath and subject to the penalties set forth in Title 18, Section 1001 of the United States Code. You may now give a five-minute summary of your written statement. If you would please make sure your microphone is on and pulled close to you so we can hear you. You have to press the button. Is, is it on? I hear yeah. Thank you. Okay. Right. Um, thank you very much, Chairman Upton, Chairman Murphy, Ranking Member Pallone, Ranking Member Deguet, other members of the committee, thank you for inviting me here today to testify before the committee. My name is Michael Horn and I'm President and CEO of Volkswagen Group of America, a subsidiary of Volkswagen AG headquartered in Germany, in Wolfsburg. I volunteered to come here before this committee at the very outset of these inquiries in an effort to show our commitment to cooperation. We have not had the opportunity to review all aspects of this matter. Indeed, the investigation is just beginning. Therefore, my testimony and my answers to your questions will be, by necessity, have to be considered preliminary and based on my best current recollection and information. On behalf of our company and my colleagues in Germany and me personally, I would like to offer a sincere apology, sincere apology for Volkswagen's use of software program that served to defeat the regular emissions testing regime. In the spring of 2014, when the West Virginia University study was published, I was told that there was a possible emissions non-compliance that could be remedied. I was informed that EPA regulations included various penalties for non-compliance with the emission standards and also that the agency could conduct engineering tests on their own, with, uh, which could include um, analysis on defeat devices, or other auxiliary equipment. Let me be very clear about this. While I was told about the EPA process, I was not then told, nor did I have any reason to suspect or to believe that our vehicles included such a device. I was also informed that the company engineers would work with the agencies to resolve the issue. Later in 2014, I was informed that the technical teams had a specific plan for remedies to bring the vehicle into compliance and that, were, uh, that they were engaged with the agencies about the process and you mentioned this also in your statements. On September 3, 2015, Volkswagen AG disclosed at a meeting with the California Air Resources Board and the US Environmental Protection Agency that emission software in four-cylinder diesels in form um, in four-cylinder diesels vehicles from model years 2009 until 2015 contained a defeat device in the form of hidden software um, that could recognize whether a vehicle was being operated in a test laboratory or on the road. The software made those vehicles emit high levels of nitrogen oxides when the vehicles were driven in actual road use rather than laboratory testing. In Volkswagen's recent ongoing discussions with the regulators, we described to the EPA and CARB that our emissions control strategy also included a software feature that should be disclosed to and approved by them as an auxiliary emissions control device, which is also called AECD, in connection with the certification process. As a result, in order to show that we act immediately, we have withdrawn the application for certification for our Model Year 16 vehicles, and we are now working with the agencies to continue the certification process. These events, and I fully agree on this, are deeply troubling. I did not think that something like this was possible at the Volkswagen Group. We have broken the trust of our customers, dealerships, employees, as well as the public and the regulators. And let me be very clear, we at Volkswagen take full responsibility for our actions and we are working with all the relevant authorities in a cooperative way. I'm here to offer the commitment of Volkswagen AG to work with this committee, to understand what happened and how we will move forward. EPA, CARP, the U.S. Department of Justice, State Attorneys General, as well as other authorities are fulfilling their duties to investigate this matter. And we are determined to make things right. This includes accepting the consequences of our acts, providing a remedy, 
and beginning to restore the trust of our customers, dealerships, employees, the regulators and the American public. We will rebuild the reputation of a company that more than 2 million people worldwide, including dealers and suppliers, rely, up, rely upon for their livelihoods. Our immediate goal is to develop a remedy for our customers. While much work is still to be done, I'd like to talk today about how we get from where we are now to that goal. First, we are conducting investigations on a worldwide scale on how these matters could have happened. Responsible parties will be identified and held accountable. Thorough investigations have already begun, but any information development at this stage is preliminary. We ask for your understanding as we complete this work. Second, it's important for the public to know that, as the EPA has said, these vehicles do not present a safety hazard and remain safe and legal to drive. Third, technical teams are working tirelessly to develop remedies for each of the affected group of vehicles. These solutions will be tested and validated and then shared with the responsible authorities for approval. There are the three groups of vehicles involved, each containing one of the three generations of the two-liter diesel engine. Each will require a different remedy, but these remedies can only be our first step to our customers. Fourth, we will examine our compliance processes and standards at Volkswagen and adopt measures to make certain that something like this cannot happen again. Fifth, we commit to regular and open communication with our customers, dealers, employees, and the public as we move forward. And as first steps, we have set up a, a designated service line, website, microsite to be a channel for this communication, and I've sent a personal letter to every affected customer. I can offer today this outline of a path forward towards the goal of making things right. Nevertheless, Volkswagen knows that we will be judged not by our, judged not by our words, but clearly about our actions over the coming weeks and months. These events are fundamentally contrary to Volkswagen's core principles of proving value to our customers, innovation and responsibility to our communities and our environment. They do not reflect the company at that I know and to which I have dedicated 25 years of my life. It's inconsistent that this company involved in this emissions issue is also a company that had invested in environmental efforts to reduce the carbon footprint in our factories around the world where our plant in Tennessee is the best factory in this respect. In closing again, I apologize on behalf of everyone at Volkswagen. We will fully cooperate with the responsible authorities. We will find remedies for our customers and we will work to ensure what, that this will never happen again. Thank you again for allowing me to testify today and I look forward to your questions. Thank you.